My name is Eva Galpern. I'm a global policy analyst for the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Um, I am based in the United States, but I travel all over the world. The Electronic Frontier Foundation is a digital civil liberties organization, and our job is to make sure that when you go online, your rights come with you. And uh, the Internet is global. It's not just limited to the United States. So it's really important that we do our job all over the world. Well, um, I, I think that people have very different ideas about what the balance should be um, between sort of the freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of information, uh, and, uh, and transparency. Uh, governments, obviously, would like uh, to be able to say anything they want while um, having your life be as transparent as possible, uh, while they are not accountable at all. Uh, we would like for people to be able to say whatever they want while governments remain accountable and transparent. Uh, and this is a, a very common sort of clash that we have uh, in government. These freedoms are under constant attack. Uh, one of the most interesting things which is going on right now uh, in the United States and which has implications for everybody all over the world is the battle between uh, Apple and uh, the uh, United States FBI, where the FBI wants Apple to create new software which would help them to unlock an iPhone that was involved in the San Bernardino shootings. And uh, EFF has just filed an amicus in that case saying that uh, this would be tremendously dangerous and that this is actually a, um, a threat to Apple's free speech rights because code is speech and forcing Apple to write code is compelled speech. Um, and specifically, mm. we think that this speech would be tremendously dangerous to everyone because once you have made the, uh, the software that allows uh, the, the government to unlock the phone, then it would be much easier for the government to go to courts and get them to do it again and again and again, and not just for the iPhone, but for, for everybody's phone. Uh, and we think that this is tremendously dangerous. It's a very bad precedent. Um, and just in case you thought that, oh, this is just happening in the U.S., um, other countries took one look at this uh, at this case and said, "Yes, we would like backdoors too. We think that they would be a very good idea if we could uh, uh, if we could force Apple to uh, cooperate with our law enforcement every time that we wanted to unlock a phone." Uh, so we think that that's tremendously problematic. Um, and I wouldn't want to leave you with the impression that we are always for corporations. Uh, and always against governments. Uh, there are plenty of bad things that uh, the internet companies do. Uh, mm -hmm. We have filed this amicus in support of Apple in this particular case, but we actually have a long history of suing Apple, um, <laughs> usually over uh, issues uh, involving free speech and mm -hmm. sometimes over issues involving DRM and, uh, and intellectual property. I don't want to run around scaring everybody all the time. It's exhausting to be scared and it's exhausting to be angry. Um, but at the same time, I think that the, uh, there, as much as the internet is, is opening and making it possible for people to communicate with each other in ways that they couldn't before, and I think that that's really exciting, it's also closing and becoming a, uh, becoming a place where it's easier and easier for both corporations and governments to spy on people. And so things are rapidly both getting better and also much worse at the same time. So there is, uh, there is cause for great hope. Um, but we are also under threat. Uh, and I think it's really important uh, to, um, to continue fighting the bad things while, while not losing hope and while not losing your ability to enjoy the good things about the Internet. I think that I think I have it easier than most people. I work with a lot of people on the ground in countries where what they do is illegal. I work with a lot of people who take tremendous physical risk in doing what they do 
And I try to help them uh, to protect themselves and I try to enable them to do their work. But I'm not taking the kinds of risks that they do. At the end of the day, I go home to my comfortable apartment in San Francisco and I very rarely get hassled. And the people that I work with have much more precarious lives and take much greater risks. And I have so much respect for them and, and what they do. And the very least that I can do is try to make their lives as safe and as easy as possible. Well, Twitter recently bragged that they shut down tens of thousands of accounts in the last several months, uh, most of them having to do with ISIS. Uh, and largely at the request of the of the U.S. government. And I actually think this is tremendously problematic. I don't think that shutting down these accounts uh, hurts ISIS in any way. I think that driving this kind of speech underground makes it harder for the authorities to track what people are saying and how people how people are feeling. And it doesn't really address the the root of the problem which is that ISIS is the result of uh, years of, of Western meddling in the Middle East, that this is essentially mm -hmm. blowback for, uh, for our many, many political missteps. And just trying to shut people up on Twitter is like putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound. I don't think it's going to help, and I'm fairly certain it's going to hurt. I am a crazy free speech maximalist. I understand that in Europe there, there is this notion that, that hate speech exists and you cannot be allowed to, to spread hate speech. But I think that hate speech is a symptom and the problem is hate. Uh, and you're not going to put an end to hate by stopping hate speech. You really need to address the, uh, the core issues behind why people think it's okay to speak like this rather than just trying to shut them up and hoping that it'll go away. In some ways, yes. Um, I would note that uh, nearly everybody who was involved in receiving the Snowden documents has managed to return to the U.S. safe and sound. Uh, Glenn Greenwald has come to the United States to accept awards, to give speaking gigs. Uh, Laura Poitras has moved from Berlin back to New York. Uh, I, I think that these kinds of um, the, the, the risk to the people who received the papers uh, right now is really quite minimal. There are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, the first thing that you can do is you can go out and you can take a couple of steps to secure your own privacy online, uh, specifically your um, your data in transit. So go to um, uh, go to www.eff.org. Uh, we have a uh, we have a link for HTTPS Everywhere, which you should download to make sure that you all of your um, that when you browse websites uh, and they are available via uh, HTTPS that you're uh, using HTTPS by default. You should also download uh, Privacy Badger, which uh, eats tracking cookies, uh, especially if you're concerned about being tracked um, not so much by governments but by corporations that might also give information to governments. Um, we also have a site called Surveillance Self-Defense, uh, which is at ssd.eff.org, and uh, this is where all of our privacy and security advice is located. Um, and this stuff is particularly interesting, not just because it, uh, it tells you about how to, how to protect your data in transit, but it also tells you a lot about encryption, about how to protect your data at rest, and how to make smart decisions about choosing the right tools for you, um, because you cannot protect your, all of your data from everybody all the time. What you really need to do is you need to look at your problem, think about who you want to protect your data from, and what data you want to protect, and how much trouble you're willing to go through in order to do it, and then you can start making the kinds of, of decisions that, uh, that will effectively protect you without driving yourself crazy. I'm very excited about the uh, sort of move by companies to actually protect the uh, data of their users and uh, to understand that being able to protect that data has value. 
and uh, starting to create these kind of uh, coercion proof designs so that governments cannot force them to give up user data. I think that this is an extremely exciting development. Um, it takes a lot for me to say nice things about Apple, um, but I think that Apple is absolutely doing the right thing in their, um, in their case against the FBI. And I would like to see other companies start engaging in this uh, coercion proof design. I think that that would be fantastic. Um, I'm also very excited about uh, the per proliferation of end-to-end -end secure messaging. Um, I think that that's really one of the ways in which we can um, have control over our, our own in, uh, encrypted communications. And I would really like to see more, um, uh, more messaging end-to-end uh, -end encrypted by default. And I think we're starting to see that uh, with WhatsApp so we don't really know when the end-to-end -end encrypted messaging is being used. And we're starting to see that with like wonderful uh, free services like Signal. So I think that that's also an excellent development.